If you're familiar with what I do, then most of you are probably already aware of this, but I am bad at video games. I know, I know, it's a shock. Everyone thinks I'm the number one esports gamer of all time. That's just how I expertly depict myself in my videos. But in reality, there are actually many moments in the past where I've gotten things wrong because of skill issues. So when I saw this video by Scooty eating every mushroom in the Mario games, I thought, Man, this looks like fun. If only I can make it that far. So instead, I'll be seeing how quickly I could die in every Mario game. I'll only be doing the mainline games, since I'm not sure how you're supposed to die in Mario Kart. Hey buddy, put, put me down, LET ME DIE! This also removes the Mario Maker games as eligible for this video, but even then, that's 19 different games. I'll have to record like 10 seconds of each. So for the sake of simplicity, dying is when this animation plays, and not a game over, as it would make things more repetitive, and also not every game in the series has a game over system. With that being said, let's hop in. Super Mario Bros. is an icon of a game. Having sold over 58 million copies and being the face of the NES. Not to mention, it's one of the, like, four good games on the system. With these factors in mind, it's no wonder that Super Mario Bros. would become such a huge series over the years. Even being one of the most highly competitive speedrunning games, at this point, the run requires perfection in all aspects, as well as multiple frame-perfect tricks, only to get the record down maybe a slight minuscule fraction of a second. With that context, here's my super high skill death run. So the speedrun route is very high-tech and complicated, especially if you're not a professional gamer. So let me break things down. First, we strategically run towards the Goomba, then we die. This is how a lot of the early 2D Mario games play out. Mario 2 Japan is much of the same, I'm playing it on the Super Nintendo version. And Mario 2 North America has you falling directly into a Shy Guy as that game starts with you falling from the sky. Mario 3 has you navigating the map before dying, but generally, the NES Mario games are very straightforward. The same applies to the Game Boy games. But because they're even smaller games on a smaller system, the size of the levels is smaller, allowing for even faster times. But things are only getting more advanced with Super Mario World. Here's where we see the first thing introduced to make these runs longer. Unskippable cutscenes. While it isn't too cinematic, the text here can't just be skipped past, so it adds extra time to the counter. Much like Mario 3, you need to navigate an overworld map before dying immediately. This gives us two paths to go down in terms of speedrunning. Oh, okay, that one's faster. Next, we got the Mario 64 run. After a short opening cutscene, we can actually play the game. So I know you can skip this cutscene if you get the jump just right. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a massive time loss. I don't think I'll ever be able to financially recover from this. Mario 64 is by far the most interesting game yet. While it may seem straightforward, with bob -omb Battlefield being the only available level, there are actually two different paths you could go down when it comes to the method of death. While the Goombas appear slightly earlier in the level, the Chain Chomp actually does a lot more damage. And when putting the runs side by side, dying to the Chain Chomp, paired with some improved movement, shows that it's actually faster to run further and die to the Chain Chomp. Mario Sunshine opens with yet another unskippable cutscene before allowing us to play the game and die. The interesting thing here is that we don't die to a moving enemy, no Goombas or Koopas or anything. Instead, it's just this like puddle of sludge. Once again, dying takes a really long time, but I believe it's still way faster than the alternative, which is to get past this part and then die. Mario Galaxy opens much like 64 and Sunshine did before it, with a long unskippable cutscene. But this time, it plays out in storybook form for a bit, so you can mash the A button while having good time. After that, we transition into the scene of Bowser destroying the Mushroom Kingdom. But instead of letting that play out normally, you can actually die to these shots from Bowser's ship, allowing us to achieve the dark ending where Mario dies in battle and has to be resummoned 100 years later after Bowser already took over. I may be getting this confused with another game. Mario Galaxy 2 is much the same. 
with the storybook opening being more expanded upon and unfortunately not allowing us to die in the opening of the game. But thankfully, there are Goombas in the beginning of the first level. While it's not as fast as falling into a pit, it'll have to do here. Now we've made our way to the new Super Mario Bros. games. While new Super Mario Bros. DS was branded as a return to the classic 2D style, the new execution modernized the formula a bit, which includes adding unskippable cutscenes. This unfortunately adds a ton of extra unneeded time compared to all the original 2D games. Wii is much of the same. You wait for the cutscene to go by, then you just move forward. New Super Mario Bros. 2 and U are also exactly the same as this. Lastly for these games, we have New Super Luigi U. Released in the year of Luigi, this game is a harder version of New Super Mario Bros. U. So is the run harder? A little bit, yeah. The original game just has you running forward. Luigi U has you taking a few jumps, as you need to get hit by one of these squirrels instead of a Goomba. And even then I kinda fumbled it here. Missing the first one, then rebounding by hitting the second. However, most of the time on both of these were with the long intro cutscenes. 3D Land is also pretty straightforward. After its opening cutscene, you just gotta get into the first level and run upwards off the map. The same goes with 3D World, except with a more distinct vibe. Kinda like these games normally. The big difference here is that you gotta get into the level through a cooler overworld, and wait for the standard Mario 3D World wait times. Mario Odyssey was a great return to form for the 3D games. After tons of 2D games, and 3D versions of the 2D games, it's neat to see the collectathon style return. And Odyssey improves on these games by incorporating one amazing change. You can skip the opening cutscene- LET'S GO! THEY FINALLY DID IT! And after Cappy goes away, you're free to roll and jump straight off the side of Cap Kingdom. And as a bonus game, of course we gotta play Super Mario 35. Oh. It looks like that game did it for me. So after compiling the data into a Google spreadsheet, it's time to take a look at the results. The fastest game was Super Mario Land, with a minuscule 2 seconds, as there's a Goomba practically right after starting. The longest run was Super Mario Galaxy 2, as there's no way to die until the first level of the game. In total, the combined runs lasted 22 minutes and 6 seconds, averaging out to roughly 1 minute and 16 seconds per game. One more thing I want to note is that the runs get longer on average with the newer games, since these newer games have cutscenes that are usually unskippable. I put more work into this than I do with my taxes. Something I found interesting was that as I went through each entry in the series, I could look and examine how the games evolved over the years even when all I'm really doing is running into the first enemy of the game. For example, the break between the old 2D Mario games and the new old 2D Mario games. It was interesting to me, as I wasn't around to see the older installments as they were coming out. Also, I do want to point out that I actually emulated a lot of the earlier titles in the series, but before the anti-emulation Nintendo fans come in, I want to say I actually do own a copy of every single game played in this video. If it isn't in this overview here, then it's probably digitally downloaded using one of the many defunct eShops. Anyways, with that being said, if you like Super Mario Bros, then I, you probably shouldn't subscribe, because this has been one of the three times I talked about the series. <laughs> Bye! Thank <laughs> you.